Welcome everyone. This is a diocesan natural family planning programming conversation. And I'm Teresa Notare, your host, and I'm um, the assistant director of the natural family planning program of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. And we have two uh, guests today. We have Cindy Leonard, who is the former NFP uh, uh, coordinator for the Diocese of Phoenix in Arizona. And we have Deanna Johnson, who is the Director of Marriage and Family Life Ministry and the NFP Coordinator for the Diocese of Tyler in Texas. And welcome, ladies. Before we get rolling, let's just say a quick prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heart of Jesus, burning furnace of love, inflame our hearts for love of you, pour your love out on our world, and call all people to you in repentance, love, and conversion. Amen. In the name amen. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Well, ladies, I didn't expect to have this conversation today, but I'm so glad. Um, this is for anybody who is watching this video. Um, this is a very common issue that diocesan marriage and family life directors and diocesan NFP coordinators are interested in many bishops as well. And it is the topic of requiring natural family planning education as part of marriage preparation for the engaged in the dioceses. The reason why we have Cindy with us is because Cindy Leonard went through uh, a very exhaustive process in the Diocese of Phoenix. Uh, and it's a successful process because they require uh, natural family planning education. And by that, I mean, a full course of NFP in a method of the couple's choice where the couple reaches autonomy and is able to use the method to either attempt to uh, achieve a pregnancy or avoid a pregnancy according to God's plan in marriage. And um, Deanna and, and her team, they're exploring, um, they're exploring this topic. Uh, they would like to do that in their diocese. So I'll just turn it over to you, Deanna, and if you could uh, tell us about how you got there, what you're thinking of, and then, of course, your, um, your questions to Cindy. Yeah. And I'm so grateful uh, to the both of you um, for just for your time, and um, I'm really excited <laughs> to have this conversation. It's like talking to NFP legends, um, <laughs> so thank you <laughs> for this. Um, so in the Diocese of Tyler, um, so I actually work for the St. Philip Institute of Catechesis and Evangelization because our bishop took out the, the faith formation and the marriage and family life departments into kind of its own organization. But he started that with a document um, called the Constitution on Teaching. And in that constitution, he outlined a kind of a new vision for marriage and family life. Um, I think it's section three where he talks a lot about this really need to this need to really look at marriage formation and how we connect with couples and we build relationships and it's not just getting them to the altar but we need to be very intentional with that and then that he just walked through you know needing mentor couples and um, having a five-year follow-up but natural family planning was something that he specifically mentioned and I know that it's um, not the norm per se across across all the United States for, for bishops to be very invested in, in NFP, um, but he made it a priority. And one of the things that he asked for was a full course of NFP being required for engaged couples. And he recognized that, you know, that is a lofty goal, but it's a worthwhile goal. Um, and it's something worth investing in. Um, and then he also goes on to mention that we need resources for married couples. Um, and as someone who has been married for seven years, NFP is different <laughs> as a married couple than as an engaged couple. Um, it gets a little more real. Um, so to be able to have um, like postpartum support specifically um, for couples and in that ongoing discernment of what responsible parenthood is and being open to life and not being afraid um, and using NFP as, as a tool um, to practice responsible parenthood. He really wants to be intentional in how we pass that on to couples. Um, so when I came on board in 2017, we really assessed kind of where we were at 
as a diocese. And I imagine that we're very similar to, to other parts of the country um, where we're really starting from scratch. <laughs> it's um, when I arrived, um, a lot the places that had NFP resources were utilizing things like um, Couple to Couple League, um, which has great, great materials. Um, the Cathedral Parish here in, in Tyler specifically. Um, but to give you kind of a, a feel for what our diocese looks like, um, we're a very rural <laughs> diocese. We make up um, East Texas, um, the East corner of Texas. Um, we cover like 27,000 miles. So uh, some of our parishes are like four or five hours apart. Um, so what we've been looking at is, you know, having regional support for NFP, but in many places we are, we're really starting from scratch. So it's like, okay, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if we're going to get to the point where we require a full course of NFP, then we really need to make sure that there is a local support available for those couples. Um, where they don't have to jump through a million hoops to get access to that education. Um, and then the other piece is that we are um, a heavily Hispanic diocese. So about 70% of our diocese is Spanish speaking, which is beautiful, um, but having the same types of resources available in English and Spanish. And then um, also recognizing that not everybody has access to the same technology. Um, so partnering with parishes to figure out how we can, can make that more accessible. Um, so as we've been discerning next steps for our diocese, the first thing that we were able to do almost immediately was require an introductory course because that was something that was not part of our marriage formation requirements initially. Um, and what we said was, well, a lot of this is online, um, you know, between couple to couple league, learn an FP online and, and many others. Um, there's really no excuse why, why you can't have access to um, an introductory course, even if you're not going to continue you know, using a method. Um, but at this point, really looking at, okay, how do we start to build that foundation? Um, towards you know this this full course, and I I do get the sense that um, that uh, partnering with priests is going to be a, a key piece in all of this. Um, and I was going through the Diocese of Phoenix um, plan, and I I am in awe <laughs> of of what was accomplished there, and all of those things are are um, steps that we we had thought about in and or at least pieces of it we had had thought about like you know parish representatives or things like this but I guess one of my first questions is you know where to even start because <laughs> it is such a it is a bold goal to have yeah. every yeah. single couple go through a full course yeah. um, and it seems like a, a pretty high uh, high bar but you know, at a minimum, we have the introductory course. So all of our couples going through have some exposure to NFP and usually in multiple ways. So at a retreat or through an, an intro course. Um, but like, if, if we were to back up and to just say, what is step one? Like Bishop's already on board, family life director's on board. Practically speaking, what would you say is like the next place to direct the the energy okay well congratulations on all you've accomplished so far it's great um i have a couple questions before um i can start answering but one is um when you say you have a an intro to nfp how long is it and is it the same for everyone that's that's a great question so and that's something that we're reevaluating as well so what we have basically done is said um you need to, to attend an intro course for a method. So for me, so I'm a certified Billings teacher. So if someone were coming to me, then I would do like part one of, of that training. But couples, right now we're just giving couples the opportunity to do an intro in any method. Um, the one from Learn, FP on, Learn NFP Online um, is the primary one that, that we had been recommending. Um, but also couple to couple league. Um, we really like their, their materials. Um, what kind of intro do they have? 
Um, I didn't know I, they had an introduction. I don't think it's technically an intro. I think it, it's a sneaky way of getting couples through like an entire <laughs> course. Um, and but that's, it's last one. You've already paid. Oh, right? There you go. <laughs> Cover marketing. <laughs> right? Right. Um, and actually, that's what the cathedral was doing. Um, they were just telling couples like, you just you just have to do this. And it ends up being a full a full course. Um, we have some Billings teachers in our diocese currently. So um, that's as far as live sessions, that's really the main one. And then we do have one um, fertility care medical consultant um, and she teaches the Creighton intro, like part one. Right. And that, that satisfies that requirement. Okay, and then the other question I had is, do you have um, anything like with Theology of the Body? Like, do you have a retreat where they need to attend prior to NFP? Yes. Okay. Yes, we have a retreat called Three to Get Married, and we're, and as far as the, the requirements for marriage formation, we've asked our couples to not do NFP until they have gone through that retreat because we feel like you need to understand the why behind the what. Absolutely. Really address the sacramentality. Um, I'm, I'm pretty insistent on that. And of course we have couples that don't always right. line up the right way, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's our recommendation. That, that's really critical. Sounds like you have a lot of the pieces in place. Um, and then, um, do you have a sense with the with the rural rural nature mm -hmm. that you have, um, and saying in and span with a heavily Hispanic? And you did mention that you think that they don't necessarily everyone doesn't necessarily have access to online materials now with COVID and people doing online masses. Do you think that's changing at all? I I think it has. I really think it has because um, we've even moved some of our um, retreat material to an online platform and couples find a way um, okay. to have access to it. So where I would not have before promoted a lot of the online learning because it's like, no, you got to learn in person. You got to be in the flesh and work right. face to face. Now it's right. like, well, this is a new reality for us. Yeah. The other piece is that parish. there are parishes in our diocese where the priests have um, expressed like if if there are couples who need access to to um, like online education and they can't do it at home they can do it in the parish um, so we're keeping that in mind too like an NFP hub kind of a thing where okay regionally you can come here to okay. do online learning okay well Teresa do you have any other questions before we kind of dive well, in yeah, or I was just going to jump in and say at this point in time precisely because of the 2020 worldwide mm -hmm. pandemic and in the United States, um, my gosh, we've been all forced, uh, especially we in diocesan ministry, yeah. we've been forced to learn how to communicate, uh, connect virtually. Um, so I would not be afraid of virtual NFP instruction at all any longer. Yeah. Our national NFP provider have gotten expert at this. Um, and even if so, you yes, you have couple to couple leagues, they have English and Spanish. Yes, you have Marquette method, English and Spanish, and that's a symptom hormonal method. Uh, Billings has English and Spanish. Um, Family of the Americas, um, they still have um, the traditional distance learning that they send and mail to people through um, um, the postal system, but they also have individual teachers who will do exactly what we're doing right now. And mm -hmm. the same is true for Creighton Model because they have individual teachers who will, who will uh, work through Skype or any of these um, platforms in order to work with couples. Um, Mar Marquette Method, uh, a group of teachers banded together actually and um, Put together some websites so we've got those links on the uh, united states conference of catholic bishops website that you could easily link to and um and you can grab those um those links and in recent times um a few newer um groups of nfp providers have emerged as well so for example there's a, a symptothermal method that has its roots in the new england nfp association and they're called the boston cross check 
and they are 100% virtual. They do all of their education uh, through the internet. Uh, I have them listed in our um, website as well. Um, uh, the, uh, the founder of that uh, is the former NFP coordinator for the Archdiocese of Boston. Uh, so we, we've got resources like that that I don't think you need to be afraid of. But because you already understand that you need to lead with church teaching and you need to make sure that the couples get the vision uh, first so that they're motivated because let's face it, natural family planning uh, means behavior change and it means discipline and sacrifice and all of that other good stuff. So, so to have the, the deep understanding of what God has given men and women is really critical. And, and to begin with that is huge. Um, so, so having that available, even right down to if you can create little, little recordings of conversations like what we're doing right now um, between the bishop and some couples and having that um, as part of your toolbox to be able to have some of these people who can't make some type of in-person um, uh, marriage prep training where they're getting church teaching to listen to their bishop uh, speak like this even uh, in that kind of canned format um, is better than nothing, you right. know, and it's, it's something. Uh, and then to turn it over to um, the NFP providers who often do real time education uh, rather than just um, uh, videos that you can watch and learn at your own pace, which I know CCL also has that as a format as well. Um, you've got plenty to choose from. So I just want to encourage you and your team to um, not be afraid of that. And, and to say, even though this may seem like you're climbing up Mount Everest, you know, it's just a lot to get done. Um, it's doable. And you have the single most important factor in your, uh, as part of your foundation, and that is your bishop believes this needs to be done. And that's huge because it's not so much that bishops um, don't believe it can be done. Uh, I, I think that with many bishops, um, there's so much going on in their dioceses. And if they've got programming that's up and running and it's working, they're not gonna tinker with it. Yeah. Um, so, so you really almost need a Holy Spirit moment <laughs> to say, wait a minute, we need to go this way. Um, and so for your bishop to, to know that and to get that, um, and that shows up in all of the surveys that we do in, uh, on the dioceses every year, that when the bishop is behind the NFP ministry, that ministry will flourish. Um, so yeah, I'll stop talking now. Um, Deanna, it, do you have a board of directors for your office or? I don't uh, have a board specifically for the Family Life Office. We have one for the St. Philip Institute. Okay. Um, and I, we do have the benefit. Um, so I actually have an executive director, um, Dr. Stacey Trosankos, and then the bishop. So, so I, it's almost like I get access to bishop more often than, than perhaps I normally would. Yeah. Um, which is helpful. <laughs> you, you might consider um, finding out if you can get some type of um, advisory committee or board together that could help you because you have such a spread out diocese. Mm -hmm. And you would want it comprised of, of NFP teaching couples, um, medical, um, priests, especially those who prepare, you know, the, you know, the priests that are doing the best weddings, yeah. the ones that want to, yeah, right. the theology of the body priests. Exactly. And those that can get um, some great ideas going and, and could be representative of, um, of both the Hispanic community and the English speaking community, but also all parts of, of your diocese. Um, I think that's a that's what we started with that. And I kind of moved away from it after things were rolling. We didn't meet nearly as often, but it does help you to help, help um, it helps you to have um, some 
some help in getting kind of the priorities set and um, especially if they know it's a working board advisory, but also working board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you'll have actual feet on the ground to help you. Um, also the ideas that will come, but it also kind of keeps you moving because you know that you've got to, you know, um, you know, kind of be accountable to the sport right. too. So it, it's, there's a help in, in a lot of different ways. So I would encourage you to do that soon. Um, the other uh, thing I would encourage you to do is it in the three to get married, if there is room for about a 50 minute introduction to natural family planning that. at the end of it, mm -hmm. I would make one that is diocesan wide. You can take a look at ours um, that we put in the end of God's plan. And if, if you can't find it in there, I've got, I've actually redone it since it's been uploaded just to get, give it a nicer background, but you could take that and make it your own. Um, and that could help you in a lot of ways because you're advertising all the methods that you have on it, you know, and so that they understand you know, NFP isn't just this one thing. And um, so this could be right from when they're already learning about theology, the body and the, and the why, <laughs> you, you wanna give them a hope that, oh, we, we, we are gonna have a million kids. What, what's, you're gonna give them a hope that there is a way to, <laughs> to plan for your family that is licit, that is something that the church, you know, approves of, and that is actually part of your toolbox. And then, then clear directions from there, how they go about finding their teachers. In the Diocese of Phoenix, it's all centralized, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's just the way we have it. So all the money flows in to one place, all the training comes from one place, all the materials are purchased. So we have a real handle on what's happening, but I know other dioceses that do it differently and then get their statistics from their various teachers at the end of the year and all of that so do you feel like that allows for kind of like quality control over like, i think so yeah because that's that yeah. has been a, a a concern you know teachers maintaining their training certifications and things like that so you're saying that when it's centralized the the diocesan office is in charge of providing the training in a specific method to all of the different or it meets the um yeah, yeah so, the, so it we do everything um so it's kind of like a little university that we run because we have um whatever methods we we have trainers in only a couple methods that are in-house so we kind of push for that but we might have people that are that we need to send somewhere to get trained or bring in a trainer for if they really want a different method than that where we have in-house, we can raise the funds to do that. Um, then we have them sign an agreement that they need to work for us as volunteers for a certain length of time. All of our teachers are considered volunteers. They're not making a living doing this, but we do give them stipends at the completion of the courses. And it's a real, it's a real work cycle type of thing so that when our office receives the returns, you know, the follow-up forms and the charts that were made by the, by the um, actual clients that's kept in lock and key, under lock and key with HIPAA standards at our office and not in teachers' homes. And then we provide the certificate too so that we can look. And so when I was the coordinator, I read every follow-up that came in. And we taught over a thousand a year, a thousand couples a year. So, but it was, you know, year, a year long process. So, um, you know, it was just kind of flowed um, that way. But then we really did have quality control over our teachers. We would have to go out uh, and I had, I couldn't physically see all hundred teachers teaching every year, but I had master teachers that and I had a rubric that they needed to bring with them when they when they observed the teachers and so that they could, you know, make sure that they were really representing the diocese well. The nice part too is that because we did it that way, um, th we had funds for our office. So we ordered the supplies, did, you know, made an upcharge. So everybody was pretty much the same cost, mm -hmm. you know, for the for the clients. 
And so, you know, about half, so about half of our funding came from the Bishop's Appeal and half of it came from class, wow. um, the classes the you know, that the clients actually paid for. And we were able then to, you know, give scholarships and stipends out of that and, and have four employees down here, you know. So we have our own online Simto Pro teacher mm -hmm. um, who's only 20 hours a week, but she's able to teach you know, about, um, about 30 clients, client couples a month mm. with that kind of 20 hours a week ongoing thing. So that kind of, it takes some of the, some of it. Um, and then we have, you know, teachers of various methods too. Um, but having it central, the only, the only um, one that was difficult to incorporate um, centrally is couple to couple leak because they kind of have their own machine. But yeah. we were able to get a discount to do some of that with them. So right. it worked out. It's just hard because like um, with Couple to Couple League in particular, some of our clients weren't getting all that they thought they were getting with the mm -hmm. online because they don't require charting. And in order for them to get um, a certificate in the Diocese of Phoenix, they had to present charts. So they had to do the charting for at least the, the, the time that they were in the class, which is about three months. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we had to learn the relationships of those teachers so that we would, you know, they understood that Diocese of Phoenix is a little different. Um, and so that's what they required here. So, you know, you, you can find that out with, especially if they're kind of located all in the cathedral. Yeah. You yeah. know. That, right, not, hopefully this isn't like switching gears too much, but um, yeah. the, the charting. Um, so one of the, when, when we talk about requiring a full course of NFP, one of the pushbacks that we have heard um, is like, how are you gonna require a couple to chart? Um, mm -hmm. Because not, I mean, yeah, we know the reality of, of the couples that are coming to us for, for marriage preparation. Um, so I guess, how do you address that, that concern um, or, yeah. <laughs> so that, that was um, the biggest, one of the biggest concerns we had when we decided we were going to do this. And I know as a, as a teacher and coordinator, I was just as terrified as my teachers because we thought, we're gonna have this room full of people who have to take our course and we're requiring in them to chart, they're gonna walk right out. But I kind of made up a little speech that I had my teachers kind of, you know, like you can do this. And it was basically, you know, like, welcome to this class. This is an adult education learning experience. And as such, we have some expectations of you and you should have some expectations of us. And so I just, you know, like, I'll always be here. I'll be here for you on the phone and I'll, you know, and I'll show up and da, 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 da. And we're going to give you um, the best methods that, you know, with science and da, 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 you can, you know. And then, but we expect you to attend the classes together, cell phones off, you know, no texting under the table, really putting your heart and mind into this course. The worst thing that could happen to you the, is that you would learn a lot about your bodies <laughs> and about how you're made and how and learn how to communicate with each other about this awesome gift. The best thing that you might get is a method that you're going to use for the rest of your reproductive life. As a matter of fact, you know, you, you'll find this out. So we are proposing that you take this 12 months in stride if you do all of the homework that you do all of the charting necessary so that you can earn your certificate. And then at the end, you get to decide if this is something you want in your family for the rest of your lives or not. And so let's roll up our sleeves and begin. And I can tell you, I count on my hand, one, one teaching couple said, what am I going to do? And then I, I wrote that and gave that to them. And I have not had one complaint from any teaching couple since then. The complaints we get instead, by and large, are, I went to Catholic school for 12 years and I didn't learn any of this. Yep. That's the complaint. So you can't learn it if you don't try it. You can't theoretically learn how to ride a bike unless you get on the bike. You can't learn this method unless you, you know, 
check your cervix or check your secretions or put a thermometer in your mouth, whatever the method is. I still get couples now and then, not a lot, who say, I'm charting, but I'm not showing you my chart. That's too private. And I'll say, fine, you can switch to a medical provider if you wish, who also teaches NFP or, you know, um, but you know, you can show me your chart and I won't take a copy of it or, you know, whatever. I, but I work with them gently. I don't, you know, I, I let them know that that's fine. And then when they see some of the examples and they do charting examples, then they realize they, their charts aren't the same. Before you know it, they're showing me their charts. You know, they're making charts and showing them to me. So it's very rare um, to have anybody really complain a lot. A couple of lawyers a year will say, I'm not showing you my chart. But other than that, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're just more, I don't know, more private or something. But yeah. mostly, you know, we've been able to let, to assure them of our confidentiality statements that we really mean it. And that we're really only trying to help them. So yeah. it's just not the boogeyman that we think it is going yeah. to be. Yeah, no, that's really helpful and encouraging. Uh, yeah. Here, because that that is the number one <laughs> thing yeah. that I get I, I get pushed back on. Um, I think another uh, question that that immediately comes to mind is when you all even began this conversation in the Diocese of Phoenix, where were you as far as even having NFP resources as a diocese? Were you oh. Yeah, like, yeah, I guess just could you describe where things were in the beginning and then just how you grew from there? Well, we were very fortunate in that as early as 1974, we had a doctor, a nurse, and a businesswoman start an independent Phoenix Natural Family Planning Center at our Catholic hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they, they started fudging together classes. You know, they take some of Billings and they take some of ST and they, you know, kind of mimeograph like crazy and <laughs> had classes. So in my, when my husband and I went to the classes in 78, it was a little bit of a hodgepodge, but it was a symptothermal method mm -hmm. and um, that they taught and they had uh, a handful of teachers. They, and then that, that they kind of kept making relationships with priests. They would have luncheons for priests where they would have demonstrations and teachings about NFP. So that um, probably um, 30 years ago, the bishop said, you know, we need to have a longer introduction for every married couple. So we had a two hour introduction, probably as much as 30 years ago, where it was half theology even before theology of the body, it was half theology and half the science of NFP. That's it was, it was on the old slides. Yeah. Ugly. <laughs> but yes. we always had a couple witness also. Oh, and wow. so it was at that time, the stats that I did is that we had, I mean, we had a lot more marriages too then, but about of people that went through just the introduction if you looked at the, the English speaking, about a third of them went on to take the entire course series. Mm -hmm. And in the Hispanic community, about a half did. They were much more obedient and open. I don't know if that would be the same now, but that's the way it was then. Mm -hmm. So we had this, we already had a, a good community of mm -hmm. NFP teachers, mm -hmm. um, but we had to grow like crazy in order to meet um, the bishop's mandate in 2000. So uh, in 2010, sorry. So we had to just like beat the bushes to get teachers trained as fast as we could in order to have enough because we didn't have as much online then as we yeah. do now. Yeah. And so when we finally realized we were really close, um, Symptom Pro came up with a really nice online program, mm -hmm. and we were mostly Symptom Pro teachers. Mm -hmm. So that gave us that extra, we can do it. We can take all comers if we have, um, and that's why we hired an online instructor who just, so she takes kind of all the overflow. Yeah. yeah. And was this a, did I read correctly that this was kind of a five year rollout or was it faster? It was faster than that. Um, I think 
it, if you read that that web page that we put together, I I think Bishop came five years prior to his he had come and he already had a night a vision for NFP, mm. and um, but he didn't say okay we're going to start right now but but he's like you're already really close so I think we we're really close to being able to do this so when he was ready to start writing the new marriage prep um, documents. Mm -hmm. I think it was probably a two and a half year period where we had to ramp up. Okay. Um, I, I think that's about a right. Okay. If I could jump in for a moment. Um, sure. Yana, um, I, I think it's important because it, it's diocesan ministry for um, you to meet with this board that you could put together or your other leaders who are helping you uh, frame all of this toss out your ideas, come up with some goals and objectives, but have that meeting with your bishop so mm -hmm. that you can see what's his idea because bishops usually are very specific about what they want. Mm -hmm. And he may say, well, I would like you to uh, achieve you know, these three goals within the next two years or something like that. Um, it really is important to be creative and um, and to go from the most realistic to the most kingdom of God, you yeah. know, <laughs> goals. <laughs> um, but spell them out because um, having that type of conversation with a bishop uh, is always critical. And sometimes it could be like pulling teeth if you're with a bishop who maybe is creative, but he's not systematic. He hasn't really thought through what are those simple goals can my, my team can achieve now? And what are, what's the long-term, you know, that we're reaching for? Um, so that's why you've got to do that kind of groundwork of identifying what's doable and what's attainable within specific timeframes right now um, and what you want to go for in the long run. But sit down with him early on in this process to say, okay, here's what I found out. Here's what our team has discussed. Um, where do you want to go with it? What yeah. do you want us to do first? Yeah, that's that's so helpful. And I and I had never even considered an advisory board before. But as we're talking, I, that's crucial <laughs> to to doing all of this to really get a sense of because all of our deaneries are so different, um, and some certain places in the diocese are so different than others. Um, that could be a really valuable thing. We also have a very large Catholic hospital system in our diocese um, and they are striving to be a Catholic, a truly Catholic organization. Um, and so it's <laughs> looking at them as like, oh, there's so much potential there, yeah. but we well, do have yeah. buy-in from individuals that are, that are part of that um, system. So I could really see However, how- However, in that, in that hospital system, whoever are the decision makers, yeah. you need to become friends with them yeah. and you need to invite <laughs> them into this process. Mm -hmm. Because again, my gosh, if you could have a Catholic hospital system that, that would be part of this from the beginning, that would just be monumentally good. Because really? then you even would have access to offering um, science and methodology sessions and ethical sessions for residents and doctors and staff, you know, you could get into their, their whole educational pipeline uh, to, to be influencing people um, who work there, sure. That'd be um, great. Find out if they have a Catholic medical guild too. Oh yeah, because actually, yeah, that, that has come up. There's a nurse, a Catholic nurses medical yeah. guild. You'll want to become friends with both of those also. <laughs> um, you had mentioned um, a moment ago about the introductory course. And one thing that, that I had been considering moving forward, um, we're very fortunate in the Institute in that we actually have a studio um, and a production team and they can produce very high quality materials. Awesome. So one of the things that we're looking at for this next year is to actually create the introductory course for NFP that everyone would go through where we can have 
the the theology but also the science and then the witness as well um, and to be able to offer that in English and Spanish because right now with the three to get married retreat NFP is actually at the very end and that is very intentional because uh -huh. beforehand uh -huh. we talked about like communication and family of origin and some very practical like marriage skill things but then we get into the nature and sacramentality of marriage and total gift of self and the importance of the sacraments in married life um because all of that is a foundation for nfp as y'all know right. um so that by the time we have the the right now i think it's about a 45 minute talk on what is nfp we're really the couple that that's uh, that presents is really showing like this is how this is what this looks like in our marriage um, and they very briefly go over some of the science um, but to be able to go more in depth I think with um, with the science and offer a very broad um, I guess showing couples all the different ways that you can practice in FP because I, I think what I've seen in some dioceses is um, allegiance to one method and one method only. And I've, I've promised from the beginning that I, I really just want to be able to get people access to what they need. So right. teaching couples, like you can actually pick what's, what's best for you. Um, but, um, I guess all that to say, um, sorry, um, uh, like, is there, um, would you say that that having kind of a standard intro could that be a, a helpful tool in working towards um, the the requirement for the full course or um, like would it, do you think it's necessary for everyone to, to be experiencing the same intro um, yeah as part of the process i think it is because um a couple reasons one is that it shows the unity under the bishop yeah you know that you're that everybody here is doing what the bishop wants it will also bring your nfp teachers together more especially if there's a tendency to have method wars you know having them all have their best you know the best foot forward of their method is going to put them all at ease you know like you're not you're you're going to be very fair and very with all the methods that's going to make them feel better about you in your position as you bring everybody together um i have noticed um i i was i'm a simto pro instructor but i have gone through all of the instruction and I just didn't teach family of America's, but I went through their instruction. I went through the Creighton model instruction and I was actually kind of shocked at how in both cases, and it could have just been the, the, you know, the trainer in both cases, um, there was a lot of our method is the best. Yes. Yeah. And that is just something I wouldn't tolerate yeah. at all. And so I was always able to go into those training sessions and say, let me show you the other methods that we teach. Here are their books, here are their materials, here, you know, and we are very collegial. And so when we have, um, when we have in services for our, our instructors, it's not like all the Creighton people getting together by themselves or all of the Simto Pro. It's together, we learn together various things and we can learn about each other's methods. And so that if I'm training a couple that is just not, just not gonna take their temperature, I'm gonna feel very comfortable, you know, sending them to a different teacher because I already know her. And, yeah. and so anyway, all that to say that sometimes the materials or the teachers themselves could be a little bit less than collegial. Mm -hmm. And so you want to break that up as soon as you can. Yeah. and really show that no all methods are great and the best method is a method that the couple will use and so how to do that by just trusting the holy spirit but but trusting the diocese to give you the best yeah yeah that's very helpful um i could i could probably talk to you all for hours honestly <laughs> and, and and i mean just thinking like another where we could be you know two or three years from now I, there's probably a whole other set of questions but recognizing that we are very much at the ground level and and not nearly where where phoenix was when when you got started 
the the main issue um, that we face right now is lack of of teach or or access to to teachers who can do follow ups. Um, and I know um, organizations like Whole Mission are really great with with connecting you with a a, a, a person. Um, right now in our diocese, we're utilizing the um, Couple to Couple League, the new Spanish program that they have, where you you don't have to have a certified teacher. You can have a facilitator for the pre-recorded program, oh. um, which has been great because it's allowed us to to bring NFP to areas that that wouldn't have had it before. But the problem is that we don't have teachers to do in person or even like Zoom follow up after they've gone through that initial training. So we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna cast yeah. the net wide and, and trust that God will provide. But for a diocese that really needs to, to build up, I think I have, I may have five certified teachers, like three with CCL and two um, Creighton, um, and then people who are doing a Billings practicum um, but, uh, but yeah, just trying to get started or trying to find teachers, um, any advice <laughs> for, for that? Let me jump in for a second and say, um, contact the national providers as well and see if they can get some of their teachers to volunteer, um, to, to be your pipeline, you know, yeah. uh, because again, most Americans at this point in time have smartphones as well. Right. And, and these teachers can do WhatsApp or FaceTime, whatever, you know, um, if they need to do something um, that's visual uh, when, they're, when they're doing follow-up with um, uh, clients. I think any of them would be happy to, to help. Um, and um, we had a, an NFP office hours recently, I, I wanna say maybe in um, October where we were talking about this. Uh, so I can go back and get that link for you. Um, I, I know I need to develop a resource from it because we had several coordinators who had lots of programming ideas. Um, and then since we have Cindy here, Cindy jump in. Well, I think that's a, those are great ideas to contact the providers. And especially those who have a standalone um, online presence, yeah. which, which Simto Pro does um, for both Spanish and English. English for sure, Spanish they were, we gave them the translated material. So I'm pretty sure they have it done, whether or not they have an online instructor right now, that I'm not quite sure, but I, I think they do. Okay. So, so that you can have that, and that, that includes follow-up. So they, they would take them all the way through the classes, mm -hmm. all the courses, which they'd be charting in between each class and then a one month follow up after that so that they, you would feel like, okay, they've, they've gone all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, they, they earn their certificate and they're there for me afterwards. Yeah. You know, that on, they, they would be glad to, you know, check in on, you know, you could, with, with the Simto Pro, you would just, you can just, you know, sh share a chart and say, I need a teacher to look at this. And there's so many of them. They just, you know, you pick one or you just pick like anybody who can do it first. Mm -hmm. And there's, they have Facebook pages too. So oh, at least that method with that national method, you get a lot of support right away. And that probably is true of the other national methods as well. So I would think, you know, don't let it, don't, don't wait to get all of the teachers that you need on the ground, mm -hmm. um, but use that as a jumping off point. Yeah. And, um, but you could start with teacher training as well. I mean, you know, um, cast, you know, start, start training, you know, start, you know, start advertising trainings. For teachers. Yeah. yeah. But I would, I would um, encourage you to really um, interview <laughs> your teacher, you know, really make sure who you're getting before you, you know, invest in any uh, training. Uh, I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> one thing, same, one of the things we've had to, to teach our priests is that NFP is not CPR. <laughs> so, so you can't just train anybody. <laughs> 
to do that. Um, and alive. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And right. And like having people who are experienced and actually using a method um, is very different than like, oh yeah, this is a willing volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the training. They're, they're alive. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I, I would always, I would be the one who would interview I had a, a pretty lengthy um, application and then if I liked what I saw in the application I brought them in for an interview and for any then, any method any method yeah, nice. any method because you can get burned pretty quickly <laughs> yeah nope that makes sense yeah makes sense uh -huh. I can share with you any any of the documents that you need if you need to develop anything, anything you don't find on that um, Find Us Ready website. Yeah. Because I'm still a, a consultant with our office, they let me have access to all my all my document files. So I can still share that with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cindy, can you give the web address for the Find Us Ready? Um, I sent it to you earlier. Well, say say it. You can say find it. it. Is it just um, Find Us Ready or no? It's on, it's on the Diocese of Phoenix's website, isn't it? I do yeah. have a link on the Bishop's Conference uh, website. If you um, let me, if can I share, can you give me? Uh, oh, there we go. Let me, sh and I'll share my screen. Yeah, um, we, we, uh, I think you can, you can just. There it is right there. So it looks like this. It's just uh, dphx.org slash find dash us dash ready and then slash again. Yeah, we had to rebuild it. We we moved platforms and it got completely lost. So that was one of the things I had to do before I left is rebuild it. So it's all there. Um, but I think under resources, there's a lot of uh, things that you can use right away. Um, and if you don't find anything that you want, or if something's broken, cause it hasn't, you know, just let us know and we'd be happy to help you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I love the video idea. We had, we made some videos too in English and Spanish and, um, but I love your idea of doing a full intro video. I think mean, that's a really good idea. These are fairly short, 22 minutes and then a six minute one in English and Spanish. Um, but the but the idea of having a, a video that could be for everyone, I think is excellent. That would be good. Cause I, I, I like, like we were talking earlier, just having, the goal is to get couples to what they need, what works best for them and to, to be able to just have everyone go through the same thing where we know they've gotten a solid foundation. Um, but then to say, okay, here's all the different methods and here is how you would discern what would work best for you. And knowing like from the very beginning, it's okay if you have to switch, <laughs> it's okay. Yes. Yes. Find what's best for, for your situation. Right. And I don't know if um, money is a, an issue for your diocese or not. But we tried to um, we tried to give scholarships when needed, but we didn't make anything free. We we yeah. let people make payments and things like that. Yeah. But that was one thing we did do is let them switch methods without it costing another whole. You know, just buy the the new book. You don't have to pay the rest of the thing. You know, um, or if you didn't use the last book, turn it back in and just start a new method. Yeah. Because it can be kind of daunting. Um, to, to think, oh no, I, I just wasted another. $130 and now right. I have to try something different. Yeah. Right. I guess one of my, my last questions uh, quickly would just be, was there a certain point where you knew that you were ready for the, for the requirement to be implemented? Like there's like an equation <laughs> for how many marriages were happening per year divided by teachers or <laughs> yeah we actually you wouldn't believe how much math i did trying to figure this out but yeah we did get to the point and actually i i i will i'll look for a, a little report i had to actually I, I it was called find us ready and that's why this website 
was done. So I'll look for that report. It may actually be in here in the website, mm -hmm. but that was a report of what we kind of our goals that we had set for ourselves for the couple years we were ramping up where we had met them or exceeded them and then uh, how we felt that we were finally ready because we now had this opportunity to to gain a lot of a lot of um kind of like uh, uh seats by you know like a, this teacher who could do online that she's going to take care of you know, 30 couples a, a, a month, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so we got to that point and said, we're ready. And so, um, yeah, it was a lot of math because I was always, I was like tearing my hair out thinking, how many do I need, you know? And um, and so we, we did a, just bulletin announcements. Like if you want, Bishop has a plan. If you want to support the Bishop's plan for NFP, for all couples and you, you're using NFP in, in your lives um, in any method and you'd like to become a teacher in, in one of the you know, certified you know, uh, endorsed methods, come to this meeting. So we had a lot of come and sees and really gave them the vision and um, we just were training like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Do you so, know, at the top of your head, do you know on average how many weddings happen in the in your diocese per year? Um, back then, I think we were around twelve hundred a year. Wow! And yeah. I know it's gone down. Yeah. I, I even I'm afraid to even look at what it is this coming year. But I think we were in the nine hundreds when I left. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah. What are your numbers? Do you know? Um, in 2018, it was about 400, and um, I, we saw a dip after after that, more like 275 to 300 something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going down. Yeah, we did not go down because of this particular. Um, we actually went up a little. Um, oh. We 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 did a real. Um, we rolled it out you know, like a big ad campaign and the Catholic papers and, and bulletin, I mean, in bulletins and in pulpit announcements and all of this, that this is coming. And so starting uh, January 1st of 2010, everybody who's going to start their preparation after that date would have to go through the new program. And we did go from six months to a nine month wait which again, wow, you know, yeah, this is going to be did. just terrible. <laughs> <That's what we laughs> <did. laughs> oh my gosh, you know, what bride doesn't have her deposit down a whole year in advance. Exactly. But, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there was just all this, you know, angst and it was so much more smooth than we thought, but we, there was all this unrolling and uh, just rolling it out slowly. And, um, and so when it actually happened, there were people who like, let's get in beforehand so we don't have to do all this nonsense. So there was a little bump and then a little bit of a tapering off, but the following year we were even higher. That's and amazing. people then felt like there were there were couples that came to us and said, Well, we missed out. We we didn't we didn't oh, <laughs> we got there early and now can we still go to God's plan? You know, like they are already married. <laughs> so we have some priests who are doing it for married couples. You know, like the whole theology of the body retreat, but for married couples because they felt like they got ripped off. By, by <laughs> that is the best complaint. I know, <laughs> isn't it? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we're doing something brand new um, with with the Saint Augustine Institute out of in in Yonkers, New York. Teresa knows John Fitzgerald, which is keyed to already married couples, those who kind of missed out on the marriage prep that we had. So we're keying into um, this this population, and um, we're, because of him, he's providing NFP for free for these couples. So, um, and that's something that's going to happen all over. So that's something that you could also maybe contact John up in, and Teresa can let you have that information. I'm sure because um, that. Not that you need more work. You, no, but, all the time. But, but I mean, the the fact is it will snowball and it will be very exciting for you. Um, as long as your teachers aren't Debbie Downers, like, oh, this is too much work and this is not gonna, this is, everybody's gonna hate us. It really isn't true. It's really gonna be exciting for you. 
Ah, oh, that's wonderful. This yeah. has been so helpful. <laughs> so oh, helpful. God. It doesn't seem like the impossible Mount Everest to climb. <laughs> and I do know it it will take time, but it, it definitely seems a lot more realistic. Yes. Um, even starting from from uh ground level. So <laughs> good, good. Well, we are we're always available. If you um, have little quick questions, even just don't, don't hesitate. I will. I will call you. <laughs> I will email you for sure. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, we're, we're really happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy, can you um, stop sharing your screen now? If you're sure, finished? if I can figure out how to do that. It's at the bottom of the screen, I think. Yeah. Mm. There. there there we go thank you so that was very very helpful um and and again uh diana this is all of this is so doable because you've got the the biggest foundation with your bishop having the um will and desire and the vision and um and and i would just say again those realistic goals are what you're you're going to have to um and you might have to even um, be disciplined about that because there's so much that you want to do. But let's face it, with everything else that you have going on in the diocese and in your family, um, I, I would have to say that's probably the hardest thing to do. Yeah. What do we do first, yeah. and um, and um, and which goals will you know will we try to reach first? Um, and and of course, the bishop has to be in the conversation on that one. It's his program. He's the one who's ultimately responsible for right. um, for preparing all of his people for the sacraments, and uh, and this is part of it. So, um, you know, the bishops' conference does not have uh, a policy at all, uh, or even an official opinion on whether or not individual bishops should um, require NFP for marriage preparation. Um, me personally. Uh, I like to tell diocesan coordinators that um, this is probably the strongest uh, seed you could plant because let's face it, the entire world is promoting contraception. Right. The entire world is, um, oh my gosh, uh, promoting all sorts of false um, messages about human sexuality and intimacy and relationships between men and women. Um, I mean, the whole world is chaotic at this point in time. And so for a modern couple to come to marriage preparation and for the first time hear about God's plan for their lives, to learn theology of the body, to learn church teaching, um, uh, which, which then they will see, it's not just a bunch of men making up these crazy ideas. It's right. God's gifts. It's how God made men and women. It's how God made uh, marriage. And, and so then what do you do as a modern person living in uh, our very stressful uh, modern world? How do you responsibly uh, and, and um, wholeheartedly, generously embrace those gifts and yet also be realistic about how you can work with God to plan your families? and enter natural family planning. <laughs> you know, uh, these are ethical um, methods that are uh, doable for um, a whole host of people, for the majority of people. Um, again, referring to our NFP conversations that we've had uh, with um, diocesan coordinators in the office hours that I um, have been offering um, for a while now, uh, just Wednesday, uh, a couple days ago, uh, we had Sheila Reinecke from the Diocese of St. Cloud in Minnesota say that, you know, there's a continuum for NFP education. And there will be that very small major minority who will find it crazy, crazy easy to do any NFP method. Right. I mean, they're just amazing. And she said, and the bulk of people will actually um, have a, I mean, they will learn NFP, they will practice it, and there may be some bumps in the road here and there, uh, especially when you have special reproductive times like postpartum and breastfeeding yeah. or perimenopause, whatever. But there will be little bumps, but for the most part, they'll be able to do it. 
And then there is gonna be a very small minority that will have terrific struggles. And any good diocesan NFP program will have resources for those couples. NFP only doctors, um, really wise and very well prepared priests who can counsel them if it's a spiritual issue or even um, uh, uh, psychological and, and um, marital counseling um, physicians or um, counselors who can help them if it happens to be an emotional issue. Uh, so, so every good NFP program has to have their list of people. And again, what we've learned during this pandemic is not all of those people have to be on site. Exactly. Because we can do it virtually now. Uh, people are used to it. We're making mm -hmm. connections. We're getting help. And, um, and, and you've got lots of tools out there that you could put in place. So, um, so yeah, this is, this is exciting. And I do have to say that um, for those videos, if you guys could put together, you know, videos that we could promote to all the dioceses, that would be magnificent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that would be magnificent. on that for sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, so keep us posted. Oh, uh, definitely, posted. definitely. Yeah. And we and I may even reach out to you all as we're developing that, um, and really considering what needs to be in in those videos, um, just to make sure that we we really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all, so. uh, yes, I would be very happy to review things. I'm sure Cindy would sure. be happy to take a look. I've got. Um, uh, Natural Family Planning Advisory Board members at the Bishop's Conference. I'm sure any one of them would be happy to help. So yeah, it, we've got your back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate that so much. And again, I, I'm so grateful for your time. This has been so helpful <laughs> to me. Um, and I, I am very, I, I feel very motivated and just excited to move forward. I think that I, I hope this will be helpful to others. Um, because I think it's easy to be discouraged by the oh, mountain of, exactly. of, of what has to be developed. But yeah, yeah. Well, let's end our conversation with a good old glory be. Praise God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be, to, glory the be Father, to the Father, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy and Spirit, 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 as it was in the beginning, the beginning is, is now, now, and ever shall, ever shall be. be world without end. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you.